Hello everyone, this is uh, Shad Reis from CVI 2022. I'm really privileged today and again to be with uh, Jonathan Schwartz. Um, he's from Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute in uh, Atrium Health. Jonathan, always pleasure. Always, good to see you again. Always, always. So we had, every CVI we meet, we talk about something new and you always bring something new to this table. We're gonna talk about eyes for mitral clips. Yes. So. Tell me about it, I have no idea. Of course, well first, it's great to be back at CVI. This is yeah. the first time we've been back in a couple of years now. Um, and it's a meeting that's always really fun because we hear about the latest and greatest things, um, okay. despite being kind of a smaller meeting. There's okay. lots of good talks. And so, uh, the, the task for me was to talk about uh, intracardiac echo and how it can guide mitral therapies. It hasn't really been used a whole lot yet. Uh, and so, when I first got assigned the topic, I was a little bit nervous because we were just in the process of getting our 3D ICE contract. Um, there's only two devices out on the market so far. One's from Siemens, one's from Philips. Uh, the one from Philips is still a limited market release, and so we actually begged our rep to see if we could get bumped up a little bit in the chain, and we were able to get it uh, pretty quick. So Exciting. The Verisite Pro is the device we use, uh, and then we've also used the Accuson um, Acunav volume catheter with the Siemens. We have both, which is great. We could use it to compare, uh, and it's still pretty early in the process. I don't think you're, we're quite at the point where you could use solely ice imaging for mitral interventions. Um, and so in my talk, which I'll be presenting tomorrow, yeah. uh, we actually did TEE and ice. You can't get them exactly simultaneously because there's interference between the two machines, but we were able to line up the images uh, and I'll be able to show them and presenting a case where we did a mitral clip using both. Right. So we are still in the phase of case series to compare both interventions. Yep. So just for the audience, what is the, the advantage of ICE? Yeah, so there's pros and cons. Yeah. Um, up until recently, we only had two-dimensional ICE, and so that really limited our use and uh, what we could use it for. Uh, primarily, it was things like um, PFO closures and ASD devices, uh, things like that, starting to get into the realm of Watchman's le left atrial appendage occlusion. Um, but as we've gotten our 3D capabilities, that's allowed us to sort of expand um, what we're able to use it for. Um, the nice thing about ICE compared to TE is you don't necessarily need to be under general anesthesia. Uh, some of these procedures are still pretty long and it might be kind of uncomfortable for the patient to be awake for that whole, whole time. So sometimes even when you're using ICE, you still might use uh, at, at least moderate anesthesia, but yeah. probably general. Uh, particularly, the biggest thing that the ICE has been used for lately is tricuspid clips, uh, and it really helps in those cases because of shadowing issues. The tricuspid valve in general is just kind of hard to image from a TE perspective since it's an anterior structure in the heart. Uh, and so we've sort of been able to hone our skills on that and now expand it over into the mitral space. Um, you're able to mimic all the views that you have with TE. It doesn't have quite as wide of a, a view as the TE probes, but um, so with a little bit of rotation, you're able to get essentially all the same views as TE. Uh, cost is still a problem right now, since it is still new. Um, reimbursement, you're only able to, to get reimbursed for either ICE or TE. You can't do both in the same procedure. But it doesn't um, have a CPT code and you can't bill for it? It does, it does. Um, but you just can't do both. Yes. So if there's a case where you're using both ICE and TE, yeah. you, you just have to sort of eat so, the cost of one of them. But. So from your experience with the ICE versus TE, did you get all the images you need from ICE to deploy your clip? Often, yes. Uh, again, we're still sort of learning exactly how to maneuver the probe in the right angles. Um, but since you are right above the valve, it is pretty easy to get essentially every angle you need. Um, one thing that we've sort of worked out is, in generally, I'll be the one that starts using the probe and manipulating it, and then the, our um, image specialist, um, Take over. Dr. Schur usually, and sometimes Dr. Kelly as well, will um, do the, the knobs in the machine and kind of um, I just optimize the image. We actually have a, had a few cases where they will scrub in with me and do the manipulation of the catheter, and that actually helps a lot. So the difficult cases, we've sort of been able to work around it, but it, sometimes it is tricky to get the same views. Absolutely. Well, sounds like a up and coming, still investigational or still case studies need to be done more, but definitely something uh, innovative coming up and hopefully one day you don't need a TE anymore. I think it'll expand uh, both the amount of patients that we're able to treat, the speed of cases will probably speed, go faster eventually, that'll allow us to do more cases per day. 
patient comfort will be a big part of it. So Absolutely. it's a bright, exciting future here. It is. Jonathan, always nice to talk to you. Please, Likewise. thanks for being with us. Please watch this video and others on the CBI YouTube channel. This is Shad Reyes from Denver, Colorado. Jonathan, thanks so much. My pleasure.